Hello friends, if you want to gain MMR, it is important to play consistently well. So today we're going to talk about this massive risk I see many of you take that can potentially lose you the laning stage before it even begins. And it's what you're seeing on the screen right now. And it's that many of you walk into the lane like this and you go looking for trouble and you find it. Now, in this case, it's a Marana versus Witch Doctor. Maybe not the end of the world, but uh-oh, oops, I actually got hit by an arrow. Yeah, maybe we could have dodged it and we would have been okay, but this is the real issue. It's the fact that you don't know where the enemy are and you're looking for them. And frankly, I kind of know where they're gonna be. They're gonna be walking into the laning stage. So when you're a squishy backline support who just wants to like poke and be ranged and be annoying, why do so many of you come looking for them through the trees, trying to find them face first? Like, yeah, yeah, hello, Tide Hunter, it's me. I'm right next to you, right? We don't want to do that, and you tend to lose tons of health when you find someone like this. There's another huge mistake that many people make, and it's the one you're about to see right here, which is walking into the enemy's half of the map, up a hill, into fog of war, just on your own, without enough information. And I think that's the big issue. This works. Doing what Ogre's doing works. Doing what we saw Witch Doctor do, walking through this, it can work. It can be good. It can be the right thing to do, but it's all an information-based decision. But I think many of you are just doing it because you've seen it happen. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And I don't think you are completely thinking through, like, why does it work sometimes and why does it not work other times? So that's what we're going to break down. In this case, this is not the, the worst time. There are several things going in our favor. One, Ogre Magi is a relatively strong support. He doesn't mind finding people face first because he has solid armor, solid damage, and he has pretty decent HP regen, even though it got nerfed from where it used to be before, he's still overall pretty strong. Other heroes like this are Clockwork, Tusk, Undying, from the hard support side, right? A lot of these like melee heroes who are very strong, they don't mind just blindly walking in first because they're strong, they want to find that. Coming back to this Ogre Magi, it's not the worst because Techies is relatively close by, but notice they're already fighting, which means if this was a tough matchup, say it was an Ursa, Ogre wants help now, but it's still gonna take Techies, I don't know, maybe like three seconds to get over, and if they're running this way, might take even longer. So if you are invading the enemy's half of the map with a teammate, you really want to be close together or kind of closing in the distance at the same time so that if you find one hero, it is a 2v1, that's great. If you find two heroes, it is a 2v2 right away, and again, we need to decide, is that what we want? Are we two weak heroes into two strong heroes? I'm not that interested in a direct 2v2, so maybe I shouldn't be doing this at all. Let's run through some examples real quick so you can see what we're talking about. Rubik gets a little impatient, feels like I have to go harass Slardar, runs through here without knowing where the enemy support was, and then gets caught out. Slardar is now gonna come over and catch up, and Rubik is forced with a choice, either run through here, get hit by Slardar and Shadow Shaman, but it's the fastest path to safety, or run to the right, Shadow Shaman gets to hit me the whole time for free, and if I ever stop, Slaughter will catch up. Neither are great for me, both totally avoidable by approaching through the lane, and I wouldn't have lost half my health without really getting anything done. I mean, Slaughter and Shadow Shaman, both essentially full health. Rubik now learns their lesson, though, and stays on this side. And you'll see, now we just get to poke for free quite a lot, and that's working out a lot better. So when you're a hero like this, instead of taking this risk through here, no need to do it at all. I wanted to harass Slardar, that's why I walked through here. Guess what? The safe path through here, you also get to harass Slardar. On the other half of the map, we're seeing Lich approach the exact same way Rubik did, but it works out better because by chance, Lich ran into techies earlier. So it's just a one-on-one -on -one here. If Techies had been a few seconds later to lane or hiding in these trees, Lich may have walked up, tried to fight Dragonite, and then ended up in a 2v1 situation. So when you're unsure, play it safe in pubs, come through the lane. Well, Zach, why do high-level players get to do this? There's a video on that. I'm not going to repeat myself too much on the positionings in the lane and things to think about, but a little bit of addition to that, which we're also not going to go too in depth in right now, but it's that the carry players are better at higher level games. So this Chaos Knight would position in a way such that Lich does get to go in on this Dragon Knight because it's a 2v1 fight. So when Techies does show, it immediately becomes a two on two, which can be favorable. 
both players and in fact all players are making very calculated decisions and that's why you will see them approach this way because there's a lot more going on than we can cover in a short video like this. Here's an example of how we can do this a little bit more safely and that is to gather information. So Silencer is actually placing an observer first. This is going to let him and Sven know are we blindly walking up into four heroes, into three heroes, into two, into one? Some of those I'm okay with, some of those I'm not okay with. But by placing this observer in a bit of a sneaky fashion, right? Silence are probably still out of sight. Now they get to choose whether we should do this or not. And you don't always need an observer. Sometimes you might see the enemy, four heroes come invade the top, right? That tells you as a support sitting down here, I was scared to walk in here blindly without any vision, without an observer. But now that I see four enemy heroes top, I know there's one hero left and you can decide, am I okay running into that hero one-on-one -on -one to attempt to steal this rune? If I am, then it's not such a huge risk, right? It's a calculated estimation now that, hey, I've gathered information, four heroes up here, and I'm pretty sure if I do run into one hero, I'll be okay. And if I don't run into any heroes, no problem, right? We aren't risking a horrible trade blindly. We have thought about it and made a good decision. So in this example, they are waiting here, waiting for the right opportunity, and now they see Hey, PA left, let's just go, right? If we run into the last support, we can catch him. And look at that, 2v1, we're getting in a solid trade. Now PA, I don't know, not paying attention, she starts making this mistake, right? Where actually from her perspective, she's the one now blindly walking up her own high ground. You also want to be careful of this, whether it's before the rune or after the rune, because if you run into several heroes up here, that's not gonna be great. Now in this case, she ends up actually being sandwiched again by Beastmaster, and then Sven actually comes back and kills her. But I wasn't really expecting a first blood here. I'm just telling you, right, if you all blindly walk up here, there is a chance you run into two heroes, and then you're suddenly very unhappy with that as a single hero. This Pudge and Wind Ranger are about to make a very high level decision, and I want you all to see this. They grab the bounty rune, and then guess what? They're just going to walk to the laning stage. This is excellent, I'm not even kidding. So many of you do what they did. You posture for this rune. Your team postures for this rune. None of you see any enemy heroes. They spawn, you grab the bounty runes, and then inevitably, one of you just walks up to the enemy's bounty rune like this. If you don't see any enemy heroes, what do you think they're doing? They're doing the same thing. They're standing here for runes, and they're standing here for runes. They're getting their runes. You're going a two and two split. If you walk up here, like five, 10 seconds after the runes have spawned, the odds of a bounty rune still being there are very low, but the odds of accidentally running into multiple heroes is quite high. So that is a lot of risk for very little reward. That's not a decision you should make without more information. For example, you're posturing here, suddenly you see four enemy heroes run in for this rune. Well, that tells me at Wind Ranger, I can run in here, and at worst, I will run into one enemy hero, but that enemy hero might also just be playing it safe, waiting for their tower, because they know four of their teammates are up here, and they might get 2v1'd. That's why you get to come up here. That's why you will see high-level players do that, grab this rune, and then walk up here. It's not just based out of nothing, like, oh, I always go check that rune. It's a very calculated decision in the same way that they will approach the lane in a very smart way. I saw enemy heroes here. I killed the enemy support. I know I can walk in this way as a weak support because I have that information. You want to take the highest chance of success in Dota. You don't want to leave it up to RNG, whether you climb MMR. Maybe they were dumb and they left their bounty rune, right? Or maybe they're there. Coin flip. I start the lane with no health, cool, right? Why make the game harder for yourself? Just play it safe and work on beating the enemy with skill, right? And not depending on RNG to work out in your favor. Hey, look at that. Pudge, Wind Ranger, they get to play the lane full health. They get to try to outskill this Clinks and Lich. They don't start with half their health and make the game extra difficult. No tangos, right? No need for that kind of risk. So. Please think about this stuff. You want to give yourself the best chance of success. It will help you gain MMR. If you want to know a little bit more about where to position in the lane, I have a video on that. I'll link it in the description. You can check it out there. Thanks for watching. I hope this was helpful, and I'll see you in another one.